we saw in that report, the Houthi rebels did allow you into their stronghold, but largely dictated what you were filming. This is the dilemma we have. It's, it's uh, frankly an open debate, and uh, namely when we see this kind of footages, because we have been uh, a kind of a tool of the propaganda from the Houthis who load us in the northern bastions in Yemen, especially in Sada, uh, which is 20 kilometers away from the Saudi border, very close to the front line and extremely rare to get here. Um, when we get to the hospital, uh, again, there is no dispensaries, no hospitals still, uh, still in place in this area for hundreds of kilometers uh, uh, away. So there is this, this hospital and we were not allowed to film other uh, things that other footage than the, the kids, the footage we see from civilians hurt, or wounded, or, or military wounded are stolen uh, footages. So we were kind of a tool of a propaganda. The thing is the paradox, the dilemma, the open debate, which we have here in France 24, is to show the faces of this, the hidden faces of the war, malnutrition, famine, um, not access to medications. Uh, this is why these children, most of them will probably die, I say, the, the nurse. Uh, so do we have to show that? Do we have to obey to the propaganda? This is a dilemma. We decided to show the faces because, uh, and my point as a journalist is these uh, kids exist. Yeah, and, it is the reality. Propaganda yeah. or not, these children are dying and dying because of the war. And I imagine because of the embargo, just... the war, no access to basic needs. Uh, they, will, they will be cured uh, in 24 hours in any other country uh, uh, out of Yemen. Yeah, so it's just those basic supplies in the town where they are. So given that, that children are now dying, and we just saw a handful, I imagine the numbers are, are quite worrying, um, what is local support like for this uh, Houthi rebellion? This is also something which was unimaginable to say or to uh, broadcast from there, from northern Yemen, because we were taken charge by, uh, for 10 days by the Houthi militias. In Sada, which is a very strong stronghold, bastion of the, the Houthis, very tribal, it's 100% uh, behind the Houthis, who are uh, uh, seen as the, de the defenders, uh, the saviors of the, of the Houthi nation, as we say. Uh, but in Sana, the capital, who was taken over uh, in 2014 by the Houthis, it's really another story. And it shows how divided Yemen it is. It is in, the, in northern Yemen, it is in southern Yemen. You have a very a big variety, very complicated situation on the ground, not naming the jihadists, who are very much there in the south. Uh, but the, the the Houthis doesn't, don't, don't have a very wide support and we had have, have the chance to make it to Odeida, which is a, a city we spent 24 hours there after a six-month battle. I can tell you that openly no, nobody will say anything against the Houthis, but there is not a wide and 100% support for them uh, among the population. Indeed, that port city of Houthis, through which much of the vital supplies need to come. Well, given that divide that you're describing when you were there just last week, you know, I mean, we've been in this war for over four years now. Right. It sounds like it's getting worse rather than better. There were some breakthroughs, some, um, some hope uh, last month because the UN went in and, and just uh, uh, make it happen. And there were some ceasefires in Nodeda in two key cities where, again, as you said, uh, the, the window to the, the Red Sea and to have uh, mostly 80% of food, uh, humanitarian aid, which is uh, not uh, coming to, to Yemen. So we were, there were some hopes, at least, for the first time in four years. But on the field, for, for instance, uh, in Sana'a, there were some bombardments, airstrikes on Sunday. When we were in Odeida, we were supposedly under ceasefire, there were some bombing, some sniping, and the population is uh, under, 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 under war. And uh, well, we, when we talk during these 10 days to the locals, to, to the locals very much, they, they don't expect anything coming from the UN, they don't expect any prospect of, uh, of, of peace anytime soon, very much. Yeah, frightening a story, but thanks so much for bringing us an insight into that current situation in Yemen. Uh, Cyril Payan there, uh, reporting for us there with Amar Amdawi, one of a series of reports we're bringing you every day this week. Well,